So now we painted this watercolor ladybug with a round brush. Now I'm going to switch to a flat brush and I'm using gouache. So I'm gonna move this like so you can see. Always wonder how, okay. So now with gouache works very similar to acrylics. So I can actually start my, my first layer. Um, I know my brush looks like the bristles are going everywhere, but I can do my first layer. Um, hopefully I can still see my pencil lines. If not, I'm just going to wing it, but I can go dark right from the beginning. I can paint with a little bit of water to make it easier. I still like to mix the red orange to get that different feel. The flat brush helps me to make sure that there's no lines. I'm, it helps me to smooth it out and go pretty evenly. I still point my brush to where I want to get that smooth line. I can add a little bit of black. I'm just making a panel right there. And I can try to paint. Oh, but it's a little too wet, so it may not work. But perfect. I can, I don't need to rely on the water to make any puddles or any pretty textures for me. I can paint solid. I can still see my line, so it's pretty good. I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side. Making a little bit of water to make it easier to move. Also painting on paper versus canvas, um, it's a little difficult, different. So what I like about gouache is it is as easy as a cleanup as watercolor. So meaning you can, um, stop and go really easily and your brushes don't get ruined if you forget to wash them or anything like that and you can do the same things that you can do with acrylics but it's but it's still water based and water soluble so saying that it's also not permanent so meaning if any if this dries and i touch water on it i would be able to move it so you can use a palette like that and you can just activate it with water, which I like. You can paint, stop, do something and then come back and you don't have to wash. It sounds like I'm really lazy. I'm not. The, there's just some qualities about the acrylics clean up and care for your brushes and things that, um, that you need to remember. Another thing that um, I don't really want to talk about acrylics because we're using gouache, but for example, gouache can scan in really nice because it's a flat color that is not shiny. So if you want to paint stuff to scan it in or photograph it, it doesn't, there's no reflection because it's really flat. So a lot of surface designers I know use gouache for their textile designs. Um, mainly for that reason, because it's very easy to scan in. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of want to try to make them the same color. Maybe I should just add some orange to this one. So again, look, you can paint over and doesn't matter. When it's still wet, you can also do the movement. So you don't have to wait for it to dry. I'm gonna clean my brush really well and getting a little bit of black, you know my black got a little dry, I'm a little red. And look at my paintbrush, not ideal, but you know, it is what it is. So you can add some black to it. Um, Yeah, 
you can fix the, the thing with your fingers. You can just kind of bend them and then regroup. If it still happens, you just may need a new paintbrush, but you can kind of use any color that's a little hard, like darker, not harder, darker, and you can just kind of blend it in. Remember, you don't want this to be super dark. You just want to see some kind of dark area. Maybe at the back you want to have some. Be careful not to take off your first layer of paint. So now you basically are just working on making him look a little bit more realistic. Cool thing about flat brushes is you can also use it to the side to get a skinny line. You don't have to just use it like that. So you can use it to the side as well as flat. Now you can go back with your red color. and even try to blend it in a little bit more. So for me, sometimes it's quicker or I don't know, but you can fuss a lot. Like you see, I can totally fuss a lot. I'm gonna add some water to mine to make it a little easier to move. And using my brush to the side, I'm kind of filling it in. Okay, so what happens if you do that? Let me lift it up so you can see what I just did. I gave him, oh, wrong one. I gave him like a little extra hair. I switched to my round brush or any brush, clean water, and I just go back and you can just, I want to say dilute it a little. Move, move, move. Because you're using watercolor paper, it can handle the paper really well. And you can take your towel and suck it up. And it's kind of gone. Of course, you can use a round brush. However, a round brush sometimes makes lines because the surface, they, the area that it covers are not as big. You can just add a few lines like that and you can use a round brush to maybe add a few lines for some dimension Okay, so it looks a little bit messy. It looks like it's a little dirty, but it's cool. Okay, I'm going to use the round brush now for my um, legs. If you can see on my paint palette. I'm making it a little more runny. So I almost want to use it as watercolor. So I can actually paint. So the thing you will notice is it stays opaque. So the way you see it is the way it's gonna dry. It's not at all like this one where it gets lighter a little bit when it dries. So that makes it really nice. You don't have to wonder how it will dry. You can immediately get the effect. Again, I'm putting my hand down so I can get even lines you also paint with a lot less water so you don't need to wait for it to get dry i don't know if i just said that but maybe but it's um so you can let it act like watercolor but it's actually quick I'm gonna go 
back over here find all the legs oops maybe your leg becomes a little thicker and that's okay and i'm gonna paint this side head Because I do not have to wait for it to dry, I can see if I lift it up and ooh, let the light help me. It's flat, it's not even shiny. See the difference? And so I can immediately start painting all the black spots. If it's hard for you to paint the black spots like that, you can always have the option to turn it around and make easy lines. You will have to figure out what works for you. Painting towards yourself, painting away. There's some, some things that works if you paint it towards yourself. Some things that works just better if you do it away. So flicking for sure is one of those things we have to do away from your body. It's just easier. Okay, so I have my little heart shape. I'm gonna paint the top one. Again, it doesn't really matter because it's not wet. So I'm putting my hand down and let just my fingers do the work. I'm making my gouache a little bit runny, but not even a lot, Michelle. Not even a lot, like a little bit. Mm, didn't really show. Because I just need it to move. So when I want to paint my, um, I'm calling them tentacles. I don't really know what they are. Antennas. Maybe not tentacles, maybe antennas. Um, I don't want them to be runny, but I want the paint to be easily flowy. So if you notice that I painted over my little white spot in my head, and that is okay. And I'm painting his head. So the option is to switch to the flat brush or to the, um, the round, to stay with the round. I'm gonna stay with the round, but if you're, if your area is bigger, maybe switching to the the flat brush is a smarter choice because it makes your lines flat. Okay, so to for me to get that smooth line, I need to point my brush where I get that line. So I'm just gonna go like that. So now I'm going to clean my brush. So just want to pick it up to show, see how um, flat it is. Like you can see my head is a little bit wet, but there's absolutely no shine. Okay, so hey, clean, I'm going to use my round brush again. I'm going to go in my white. White is like right over here. And now I'm going to add all the light highlights. So I'm going to go to this little spot. If you think your white is like ugh, too white, you can always go a little bit in the yellow. And go on top. I'm going to make one a 
one of these. Which way did I make some new? Wow. And this one and this one. And I'm going to make this one. And I'm going to make this line. And this one. But I want them to blend in a little bit more, so I'm cleaning my brush. And I may even go into the orangey red to soften the edge. So I want to soften the edge so it's not such a hard line and my pointy skinny brush is helping me with, with that you can always come back oh, let me just get my palette you can always come back with a little white to dab 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 maybe there if it's too wet, it's just going to flow. So you may want to wait a little bit, like any paint. If it's too wet, it's just going to blend in with the, that. That one is too wet. Yeah. And I like to clean my brush frequently in between. Just so I can make sure that I have a nice, um, clean look. And I'm going to add maybe a little line like that i can always come back and blend it a little bit more like i said with watercolor um with gouache it's the same as watercolor you can always come back and activate it with water again guess i'm adding some dots to that dots 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 and i'm doing the same on his over here on his um the lines on his back just adding a little line and where the two are touching here at the bottom so be careful not to have too much water on your brush. You want to have a fairly little amount. I'm going to do some highlights like that. And I'm going to add this one. Also adding a line over here. Mm. I want to get it so skinny. So my hand is flat, my brush is really light. So again, if you look at the black, the light, the dots are just putting down. So they're not at all blended yet. I can even make this one a little bit more wet. And then cleaning my brush and touching. I can come to the edge. Option is to only use water or to add a tiny amount of black on my brush so I can blend it in a little bit more. So I completely covered almost this one, so I'm just adding a little, pushing it. Now Again, easier to me is if I turn my page, and I come back, and I make a line over that, and it will blend. So I can still see the line. It doesn't have to be so perfect. You just want to have a slight light line on the side of his body you can even go all the way to his legs and just add a slight line like that and 
then you always need to know when to stop because that's a really hard one also because it's just fun to keep on fussing okay see fussing I want to also add some of the the lighter lines to this side. Let me turn it up. Oh, I just dropped drop water. Um, where did I just do it? Oh, oh yeah. So I want to come back on these legs, and I can add some lines like that to make it look a little bit more three D. But you can go back and forth, so. Your lines is not permanent you can always come back and add and then come back if you think you have too much you can just come back and add with black like this line too big I'm just gonna add a little bit black to my paint brush and make that line a little bit less and you can blend them in so for Wash, I want to say a little bit less water, but super controlled. You can still do a lot. Paintbrush needs to be good, pointy. Cleaning, I want to take a touch of water and just make some more black. So I can go ahead and add the spots. So this one on the side, I can still see some of my pencil lines. This one on this one. Mm, I think there was like one over here. Oops. And this one. And sometimes your spots become a little bit bigger and that's okay too. Okay, then I want to add the yellowish, these eye. well, no, it's not really eyes. I don't know. These six spots that's left over. Again, the same as with the watercolor, I'm going to use some yellow and some black. Definitely more, um, like, very little black. I'm going to go and add the outside I'm going to fold that in and doing the spots on his back so I'm going to fill it in completely I almost forgot what I was painting with, but I'm going to... So it feels really similar to watercolor. So filling that in and then clean, touch, and come with white. So the white is not as opaque and sometimes you may have to wait for your first layer to dry to add the white. I'm going to add a little, but I may have to come back. Maybe not. Okay, so I'm just adding some white like that. And that is my little bird. Oh ladybug before we leave the gouache 
it was something I wanted to share that I used reddish orange again mm, red this is the color I use but it's really pinkish so if I add orange oh they look the same I didn't wash my brush a while but there's for sure a difference black and I used some yellow but it was mixed with black and then white so you can actually use white um, difference between the brushes I want to say is let me get into the red is you can use your brush oh man now i didn't even see that you can see it uh, you can use it like that or you can use it like that to get a skinny line and you can always switch to a round brush but the round brush doesn't cover it as much as one stroke. So that's what I mean when I say it's really flat. Okay, let me just see if I can suck up this. Yeah, okay. So, by, um, black versus the purple that I used. Okay, so now I'm gonna use a acrylic one. <laughs> 